today we will talk about inequalities and solving inequalities and uh, let's get started. Okay. I have some glare, so... Um, all right. Let's look at a couple of things. Inequalities. Let's summarize uh, what they are. Here we go. You have the less than sign, two less than three, greater than sign, three, greater than two. I always read them from left to right. Less than or equal to, two is less than or equal to three. So make sure that one part of less than or equal to part is true. You can also, for example, write 3 is less than or equal to 3 because the equal part is true. Greater than or equal to 3 is greater than or equal to 2 or 3 is greater than or equal to 3 because the equal part is correct. So you got that part? Okay, let's move on. Addition property. So how do we do the addition property? Addition property, you have something in, just like in regular equations, you can subtract from both sides. These two will cancel out. X is less than 1. Okay? So, that's pretty easy. You can do another one. Uh, you can say X plus 2 is greater than or equal to 2X minus 3, for example. All right? Uh, how do you do that one? You can group the x's on one side and numbers on the other. So I'm going to subtract x. So what do you have now? You have 2 on the left. These two go. And you have 2 minus 1, so that's x minus 3. But I still have that negative 3 in there. So I can just add plus 3 in there. Then you're going to end up... Always read it from the x's point of view. X is less than or equal to 3 plus 2, 5. Does that make sense? All right, let's move on. How about multiplication property? That one is tricky. So when you have an X multiplied with something, you can, what you can do, you can multiply both sides by the reciprocal of that coefficient. A lot of people say, oh, I divide by 2. Divide by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. Okay, so these two will go. You have x less than 4 divided by 2, 2. That's good. Here is something you need to watch out for. When you have a negative in front of x, when you divide by a negative... This sign is going to flip, okay? So what's going to happen is x is greater than 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2, all right? So that is one thing that you need to um, pay attention. So adding a negative number doesn't change the direction of the equality, but multiplying or dividing does, okay? So let's move on. Okay, let's look at... Uh, linear expressions that are less than a number. 2x less than 6. You can do this. Does this change? No. So what you have is x is less than 3. Okay? Let's do that. 3x plus 5 less than or equal to. What do you need to do? Do the addition property first. So adding or subtracting goes first. So you have 3x less than or equal to negative 9. Now, multiplication property, which is the same as division, x less than or equal to negative 3. Do I flip the sign? No, because I'm dividing by a positive number. Okay. Now, how about greater than things? Okay, so let's look at that. Negative 3x plus 1, greater or equal to negative 5. I need to do addition property first, so subtract 1 first. You have negative 3x. Greater or equal to negative 5, negative 1, negative 6. Now, pay attention. You're going to divide both sides by negative 3. What will happen to that sign? Flips. 
negative 6 divided by negative 3 is 2. This one is x is less than or equal to 2. All right, let's do this one. How do I do that one? This time I need to get rid of that negative 3. Add. So what do you have? 3x greater than 9. Now what am I going to do? Multiplication property, which is the same as division. X is greater than 9 divided by 3. Did I flip the sign? No, because it's a positive number. All right. Okay. Then you, when you kind of look at this, um, the more complex things, you are going to have a linear equation in the middle and you're going to have a left and a right. Okay? So, how do you do that? You can actually do these guys all at once and I'll show you how to do that. So, let's do this left one first. Okay. Negative 4, 2x4. So, what do I need to get rid of? So, let's do it in red. I'm supposed to divide everything by 2. Is that a positive number? Yes, it is. So nothing changes. These guys will stay the same. So what do you have? These two will go. You have x between negative 2 and 2. Okay, let's do the middle one. What do you do first? Addition property first. Sub subtracting and adding is first. Plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. So you can do all at once. So negative 3 plus 1, negative 2. So what do you have? 2x. Does the direction change? No, because I was just, you know, adding 1. Now what? I'm going to divide by 2. Is that a positive number? Yes, it is. Does the direction change? No. So what do you have? You have x, 3, negative 1. All right. So let's do the last one. What do you do? First, you need to clear those parentheses. So let's rewrite this. 3x minus 3. Okay. Now what do I do? Addition property first. Plus 3, plus 3, plus 3. What do you have? You're going to have negative 1 plus 3, negative, I mean negative 4 plus 3, negative 1. Does this change? No. These two go. 3x and you have 5. Now what? Multiplication property next. Divide by 3. Does the direction change? No. Because it's a positive number. You have an x, negative 1 third, and 5 thirds. Now, one word of warning. When you're writing an inequality, for this equality to work, if you have things going like this, with the equal sign or not, this, this is supposed to be like in the middle, whatever it is, let's say 2. The number on the left is supposed to be a small number than 2, and this one is supposed to be a bigger number than 2. So it is true to write this, 2 less than 3 greater than 1. However, you cannot write this. Let's say 2, and you have the same thing. Let's say I have 3 here, and then 1 here. Now let's look at this. 3 is less than 2, uh-uh. 2 is less than 1, uh-uh. So this is not a valid inequality. Another one that's not good. So let's do the other way around. So let's put this this way. So let's see, where is the small number going to go? You're going to go small here and a big here. Okay? So what can you put in here? Small number than 2 is like 1 and bigger number than 2 to 3. So this is correct. But if you try to write it the other way, that's not going to work. The other thing that's not going to work is the ones that are like this. Let's say you put 2 in here and then you have those funky things. What's that mean? So when they go like this or like that, that's not good. All right? So pay attention to that. Things like this, nah, -uh, not good. So they all have to go one way or the other way and make sure that you pay attention to the small, big, big deal.
All right, very good. Now let's go back. What do we have? Now, the last type of inequality is this, those really complex ones that have parentheses and X's on all sides, and I'm going to do one of those. So let's look at that. You have 3 times 2, 6. 3 times negative x, negative 3x. So first thing you do is you get rid of those parentheses. All right. Now I want x's on one side and numbers on the other side. So you, you decide. Let's say I want the x's on the right. So what do I do? Since x's are on the right, I need to move that negative 3x on the right. So what happens to it? These two go. 6 minus 4 is 2. So you have 3 plus 2, that's 5. Does the direction change? No, because it's, you just, you know, add it, adding, subtracting doesn't change it. So, plus 11, we'll move that 11. So what do you end up having? You're going to have a 5x. 2 plus 11, 13. Last step. Divide by 5, what do you end up having? You have these 5s go. x is less than 13 fifths. Does the direction change? No. Because why? Because it's a positive number that I'm multiplying with. All right, very good. Okay, let's talk about the notation a little bit. There are three notations. Number line notation, it's a number line. And, for example, you will have, let's say, a hole. When you have a hole and going right, that means x is greater than some number. If you have a filled up hole, that means x is greater than or equal to something. Okay? Another way. Uh, you can also put this thing... It's equivalent to doing the sum books. You're going to see that. A parenthesis to the right. This thing to the right. That's a bracket to the right. You will also see that notation. All that notation is number line notation. Okay? Set builder notation. Okay? So make sure you pay attention to set builder notation. That one is going to take this squeaky thing. Don't call it squeaky thing. That is called a brace, braces. And this thing is called such that. It's a straight line. And in your computer, that such that thing is usually together with um, backslash. Okay, above backslash, and you need shift, and then you'll get that. All right, and this is how you read it. X such that X is less than 3. All right, how about this one, interval notation. When you have a 2, that means you want to. Then you put a bracket. You don't want 3, you put a parentheses. Another example, 4 parentheses. You don't want 4, but you want like 4.01 and infinity. So if you want to write this interval notation as a number line notation, you would have written... Here's your 2, here's your 3. Since this is bracket, you want 2, so you put a black thing in there. And 3 you don't want. And you want everything in between. Okay? How about 4 to infinity? Here's your 4. Infinity, that means it goes forever. Put an arrow in there. Do you want 4? No. An open circle to the right. All right, so let's practice a little bit. Okay, so we're going to fill out this table. Set builder notation. That means x such that x is less than 3. Okay, how do I write that? So x is such that x is less than 3. 0, here's 3. So it's open circle to the left with an arrow. Okay. So, how do I write that in the interval notation? So, x is less than 3. So, that means it goes all the way to the negative infinity and stops at 3, but you don't want 3. So, this number in interval notation is the small number. This number is the big number. 
So it's not okay to write this, 3 comma negative infinity like that. That's not good. The small number has to be on the left. Okay? Well, let's try the number line. Now, given the number line, you have some in, in between 1 and 2. You don't want 1. You want 2. How do you write this? You're going to write it as braces x such that x is between 1 and 2. So put x in the middle between 1 and 2. Oh, my braces look really funky. Interval notation between 1 and 2. Small number, big number. I want 2, bracket. I don't want 1, parentheses. All right. So let's do the last one. So I have it in interval notation, negative infinity to 6. What does that mean? So here's my 0, here's my 6. I want 6 because it's in brackets, and I want everything to the left of 6. Color that and put an arrow. Okay, how about set builder notation? Oops. So you're going to go braces, x such that, x is less than or equal to 6 braces. All right? Very good. So let's see. So I can show you because I have my face in there. So make sure that you see that. All right? Okay. And now let me move it to the right a little bit. All right. Combine inequalities with an OR. How do you do this stuff? Uh, it's always a good idea to use like, um, OR is like you're putting it together. Think of a bag of something and another bag of something, and let's say a bag of red marbles and bag of blue marbles, and you dump them into a third bag. So what are you going to have in there? You're going to have blue and red marbles. Even though it says OR, you're going to have all, all of them together. So how do you do an OR problem with two inequalities? So let's try that. Let's say x such that x is less than 3. Or 2x less than 1. First of all, you need to work this guy out. So that's going to be the same. Divide both sides by 2. So you're going to have x is less than 1 half. So you have a situation x is less than 3, which is this, or x is less than 1 half. Put them under each other. When you put this bag and this bag together, what are you going to have? You're going to have a bunch of numbers less than 1 half coming from this guy, and you're going to have the rest of the numbers kind of repeat it, but it's just ignore that repetition. Um, you're going to have everything less than 3. So as a whole, what are you going to have? You're going to have a situation where everything is less than 3 when you put them together. So the answer to that is going to be everything less than 3. Okay? So let's do another one. So I did this first one. Let's do these two. Okay, 3 to 6 and 4 to 9. So put them together. So here's your 0. Here's your 3. These are out of um, scale. So 3 to 6, this is what you have between 3 and 6. Put the other one underneath. Where does 4 work? 4 and then you have 9 here someplace. So you want 4 and then you have 9. You do not want 9. So you have this situation. Okay, when you put these two together, what are you going to get? You're going to get coming from here. You're going to get stuff from the first one. And then it's going to go all the way to 4, and then the second one will kick in. You'll have stuff all the way to 6, and the 6 is included. So what are you going to end up having? All the way to 9. 
So this is your answer. So this is going to be 3 to 9. Okay, let's do the last one. Negative infinity to 5, 6 to 10. How does that work? This one, negative infinity to 5. 5 is here, so you want 5 to the left. And how about the other one? 6 to 10. Here's your 0. 6 starts here and goes all the way to 10. You want 10, but you don't want 6. Now, when you put it together, what are you going to have? You're going to have that red, you're going to have a hole, and the blue. So when you put it together, you're going to have... Let's do that in purple. So you're going to have a 5. You're going to have to the left. And then you're going to have 6, and it's going to be open all the way to 10. And you want that closed. Okay? So when you put these red and blue together, you get the purple, and guess what? The purple is the same as this guy, so nothing changes. So if they want you to draw it in number line notation, you draw this purple thing. If they want you to give them the interval notation, you do this. If they want you to do set builder notation, what do you do? You go, okay, here's a new one. X such that. X is less than or equal to 5. Now watch, you can either say or, or you can put the upside down U. That's the same as or. X is between 6 and 10. Does that make sense? All right, so we wrote that in three notations. Let's see if we have anything else. Uh, you can mix match notations. For example, uh, the first one is in um, set, set builder notation. second one is interval. Well, how do you do that? Go all to the number line notation and you'll see. This one means x such that x is less than 2. And this one means between 1 and 3. So let's try to write this in number line notation in blue and red. Okay, here we go. x is less than 2. Here's 2 to the left. Okay, 1 to 3, so that means here's your 0, here's your 1. You want 1, and then you stop at 3. When you put these two together, <coughs> excuse me, what are you going to get? You're going to get from negative infinity to 1, and then 3. So that will give you something all the way to 3 and 3 open. Right? The first part is going to come from the blue. The second part is going to come from the red. And they overlap. Here we are. You can also write it like that. Negative infinity to 3. Or you can write it like this. X such that x is less than 3. All right, so let's do the end statement. How do you put two inequalities with an end statement together, okay? What that means is you're going to, end means overlap. It's not putting it together. Where do they overlap? This is or, this is end. Overlap. What do they have in common? All right, let's do these three examples. An end, overlap, in common. This time, oh, I made a mistake. I have to go back here. I just realized the notation. No, I'm good, all right? I thought I made a mistake. So, union, okay, U for or. Okay, I think I got it. All right. I thought I said someplace. All right. Never mind. Let's do the end statement. Where is it? Okay, here it is. I'm putting together 
these two things, I'm doing the left one, x is less than 3 and 2x is less than 1. Okay, so let's clean this up first. x is less than 3. Let's do it in blue. Here's your 0, less than 3. Open it, 3. Let's do this. Okay. X is less than 3. Here is 0. Here's 3, less than 3 in blue. Open to the left. 2x less than 1. What does that mean? x is less than 1 half. Put it underneath. Where did my blue go? x is less than 1 half. Here's 0, 1 half. Let's do it in red. 1 half open to the left. So where does the blue and red overlap. Since I lined them up, make sure you line up the zeros and threes and all that stuff, you're going to get everything to one half. So when you put these two together with an end statement, you're going to get zero, one half, open. Let's do that in purple. Okay, so the answer to that in, um, let's say, interval notation it's going to be negative infinity to one half open. All right? Or you can write it like this x such that you have x less than one half. Okay, so let's try to do the next one 3 to 6, 4 to 9. Okay, let's draw. Here's my 0, here's my 3. Here's my 6. 3 to 6. Let's do it in red. Open, open, here. 4 to 9. Let's do it underneath. Line up, line up. Here's my 0. Where's 4? Four? 4 is here. Where's 9? Nine? 9 is here someplace. Okay, you do that in blue. 4 to 9. I want 4. I do not want 9. Okay, where do they, where does the red and blue overlap? It's going to overlap where? 4 to 6. Do I want 4? Yes. Do I want 6? No, because it doesn't, it, it's not included in there. How do you put this um, in um, interval notation? You're going to put 4 to 6. How do you put that in set bit notation? X such that. Greater or equal to 4, less than 6. It's fairly easy. All right. Let's do the last one. Negative infinity to 5, 6 to 10. Okay, so let's do it. 0, 0, where's my 5? Five? 5 is somewhere here, so that means I want 5, I want to the left of 5. Blue one, it starts with 6 and goes to 10. I don't want 6, I want 10. 0 to 5, 6 to 10, do they overlap? No, they don't, you see? They don't overlap. So the answer to that is the empty set. Okay? So when they don't overlap, with an end statement, you get nothing. All right? So let's go and let's do this one. And I'm going to do it with, the, with this upside down U notation. This means end. Remember, we talked about that. 0 to 2, 1 to 3, with an end statement. All right, so where's my 1 to 3? If I put that in there, here's my 1, here's my 3. So let's say I want this, 
and three open. Okay, and zero to two, that one, zero open, two close. So when you put those two together, where do they overlap? They're going to overlap around here. So what does that mean? Do you want one? Yeah, one exists in both of them. So you're going to end up having one, but you're going to have to end up stopping it too. Do you want two? Yes, because this is black as well. So you end up with one to two. Okay, well, uh, number line notation. Here's your zero, here's your one, here's your two, one to two. Interval notation we already have. How about set builder notation? Let's put it here. X such that X is between 1 and 2. Recap. You can put inequalities together with an end statement. You can use this notation or statement. You can use union notation. You have three notations, interval notation that looks like this. That means I want those numbers. I want to include them. This means I do not want these numbers. So what does that mean? I do not want one. That means you're going to get very close to one, like 1.01, 1 .01, but not one. Okay? Um, the other thing you have, the step builder notation it works like this, braces, x such that, and you put some like this. Uh, how about the other number line notation? What's that mean? Put the zero in there, one to three, let's say, three to four. You have open and close. So open means parentheses, close means brackets. All right, so that's pretty much it. And means overlap or means putting it together. So don't mix those two up. Uh, the other thing, is how did we move things around? When you add and subtract on both sides, don't change the direction. When you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, that's the only time you change the direction of your inequality. Thanks for watching.